squire of 79 Wistful Vista is strictly a guy who likes three good meals, particularly for breakfast. <laughs> Get a load of him getting a load of calories as we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, McGee, you're marvelous. I am? How? The amount you eat for the amount of work you do. What you mean? <laughs> it's like stoking a steel mill to make a button hook. <laughs> well, gee whiz, a guy with as much energy as I got has to pass the butter, will you? Has to build up his energy. Go a little easy on that butter, dearie. I'm trying to, but it tastes awful good on wheat cakes. Yes, it has its point. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty a pound to be exact. Ah, boy, am I full. Any more wheat cakes? Let me look. There's about six more, dear. You want them? Oh, might as well finish them up. Ah, much obliged. Now for the... Hey, get some more syrup, will you? I'm sorry, McGee. That was the last of the maple syrup. But I'll have Beulah bring you some honey, huh? Honey? On wheat cakes? What do you think I am? A peasant? <laughs> <laughs> How about some jelly or jam? My gosh, No. What's the idea running out of maple syrup right while the guy's in the middle of breakfast? Wheat cakes without maple syrup. Now, now, relax, McGee. I'll catch the first plane to Vermont and roll a barrel of it home for you. <laughs> Why go to Vermont? What's Vermont got that we haven't got? Maple syrup. And where does maple syrup come from? The grocery store. From maple trees. That's where it comes from. And what have we got standing right out there in the front yard? Oh, that man from the finance company? <laughs> No, sir, a maple tree. That's what we got standing right out there in the front yard. And why we've been paying out our good dough for maple syrup all these years with a tree practically dripping with it out in the front yard, I'll never know. Do I understand you're an expert on maple trees, too? And why not? My Uncle Sycamore had one of the biggest maple tree orchards in New England. <laughs> Whereabouts in New England? Just west of Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> I'll never forget one maple tree he had that was right by my bedroom window. It had been plugged for syrup in so many places, it looked like a king-sized piccolo. <laughs> well. I remember how I used to lie there, in bed, when the wind was blowing, and hear that tree softly play in the old oaken bucket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now look, McGee, I don't like to be a killjoy, but I seem to remember that maple trees are tapped in February or March. And that's the trouble with the whole maple syrup industry. What do you mean? Them dummies all throw their syrup on the market at the same time. <laughs> Flood the market all winter, and when summer comes, you can't buy it for love or money. Well, I wouldn't know. I've only tried money. <laughs> <laughs> What do I need to tap that tree? I'll need a brace and bit. A three-inch bit ought to be big enough to make a big enough hole. Three inches? Yeah. What are you going to do, crawl into the tree and dip it out? <laughs> you don't understand the principle of the siphon, kiddo. You've got to permit the passage of air around the aperture. Oh? Thus permitting the gravitation to equalize the osmosis of the hydration. Otherwise, it creates a vacuum and inhibits the capillary attraction. <laughs> Heavenly days. Where'd you learn all that? My gosh, I took biological chemistry for two years. <laughs> so I got thrown out of the class. What for? I couldn't spell biological chemistry. <laughs> Seriously, McGee, are you really going to tap that tree of ours? Baby, that tree is ready. Now, that thing is so crammed with sap, it'll be like sticking a fork into a ripe grapefruit. <laughs> How much do you get out of one tree? Oh, that's a ridiculous question. How much oil do you get out of an oil well? It just keeps flowing, that's all. Well, I'd rather have a maple tree than an oil well. It's much prettier in the autumn. <laughs> Maybe we better ask Beulah how we're fixed for containers. You know, glass jars and jugs and stuff. Yeah, well, step on the buzzer, will you? I'm afraid to. Why? Well, because since you rewired it, every time I step on the buzzer... The electric heater in the bathroom burns out. <laughs> the front porch light goes on and the phonograph starts up. Now, well, must be some shorts in it, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> well, I'll call her. Hey, Beulah! Oh, Beulah! Somebody ball for Beulah? <laughs> Mr. McGee is going to tap that tree out in front for maple syrup, Beulah. Who's going to tap the witch for what? <laughs> I'm going to tap that maple tree out in front, Beulah. 
Going to make our own maple syrup. Well, for goodness sakes, is that where that stuff come from? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, Beulah. According to Mr. McGee, all you do is poke a hole in the tree and out it squirts. <laughs> Getting it from the grocery store is even easier, ma'am. Huh? Yeah, you just call up and they send a little squirt over with it. What I wanted to know, Beulah, is have we got enough containers to handle a few hundred gallons of syrup? A few hundred gallons? Yeah, oh, sure. Mm-hmm. That little old tree must be just a pile of juice with bark around it. <laughs> oh, he's an authority on maple trees, Beulah, he says. His uncle was in the business. Yeah, used to watch him do it every spring, Beulah, when I was a kid. We had a skating pond right near the woods and used to watch them while we skated. I used to be quite a skater, too. People used to just stand and watch me as I glid from one side of the pond to the other. As you what, sir? Glid. You mean, uh, glided. I do not. You don't say I slided down a hill on my sled, <laughs> do you? No, sir, that's slewed. <laughs> no, no, Beulah, it's slid. When I was a little girl, I rid on a sled all winter. You mean road, Beulah. Okay, so I glowed across the ice. <laughs> anyway, that's how I learned to tap maple trees. How do we, what have we got to catch the stuff in, Beulah? Well, you can use that old wash bottle in the basement. Fine, fine. Yeah, and we got a couple of big lard cans in the back room. Great, great. <laughs> and we got a lot of mason jars, Beulah. Yes, but I didn't want to mention them on account of Mr. McKee not being a member. <laughs> tell the Masons anything about it, Beulah. <laughs> I'll just put the stuff into the jars surreptitiously. Don't put it in the jars surreptitiously. Look what the man did. <laughs> I love that man. Hey, Molly, I wonder where I can get a few barrels. A few barrels of what? Empty barrels to store the maple syrup in. Hand me the classified directory, will you? Here you are. Thanks. Let's ah, see, barrels, barrels. The barrel of fun dance hall, 20 beautiful hostesses. Yeah. <laughs> Ten ugly bouncers. It's Benny's Barrel House. Food and drink for man and beast. Try not to act like a beast. Maybe you can find something under Hogshead or Keg. Oh, no, here it is. Wistful Vista Barrel Company. Barrels made from seasoned oak staves and rustless iron hoops, my dear. <laughs> oh, that's the one. Hand me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the wistful vista barrel. Come, come, come. Is that you, Mert? Oh, dear. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? His, eh? What's that, Mert? Your grandfather. Been hollering his head off all week because somebody stepped on his corn, eh? Well, I don't blame him, Mert. Well, that's a lot of fuss to make just because somebody steps on your coin. He not only stepped on it, he spilled it all over the basement. <laughs> What's say, Mert? Oh, no answer, eh? Well, thanks anyhow, Mert. No luck? No. But I can get Joe's Tavern to send me over a few empty barrels. That'll be lovely. We'll have maple syrup with a slight tang of stale beer. <laughs> well, I gotta get to work. Now, let's see. Here's my brace and bit. In a funnel. I'll have Joe send me over a spigot, too. That's a great idea. Then every time we have wheat cakes, Beulah can run out to the backyard and draw a quart of maple syrup. <laughs> Certainly. Remind me to send five pounds of maple sugar to Aunt Sarah, too. She can't eat maple sugar. Huh? Hurts her teeth. Oh. Well, then remind me to send her 15 pounds. She's got three teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Ma. Let's get started on this. Hello, Alice. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hiya, Pop. Oh, gone it, Alice. Quit calling me Pop. By George, I've never raised my hand against a woman unless it was necessary. Now, now, McGee, when did you ever find it necessary to raise your hand to a woman? Why, all the time when I was in the third and fourth grades. <laughs> Only way I could get out of the room for a quick chew of bubble gum. <laughs> what was it you wanted, Alice? Uh, look, did anybody call on the phone for me? Paul called, Alice. Gee, did he? What did he say? What did he say, Molly? Search me, dear. You took the message in your own unique manner. Let's see, I wrote it down on something. Let's see, I got it here someplace yeah. in my pocket. Huh? Oh, here's my draft card from the last war. <laughs> oh, here's a postcard from Fred Nittany from Starved Rock, Illinois. He's 
the guy that he and I used to have a vaudeville act together, Alice. Oh, what's vaudeville? Oh. <laughs> vaudeville, my dear, was a form of entertainment where the same people used the same jokes for 15 or 20 years. <laughs> oh, just like on the radio. <laughs> What did Mr. Nittany say, Mr. McGee? He says, Dear old pal Fib, trying out for star part in Oklahoma. Wish me luck. Signed, Fred. Creepers, a star part in Oklahoma. Isn't that super? What's that postscript, dearie? Huh? Oh, it says, P.S. Don't get me wrong. I'm running for sheriff in Tulsa. Ha, ha. <laughs> That's very funny, but where's the message you wrote down when Paul called? Well, I don't know. I just swore I had it here. Oh, here it is. Well, what does it say, Mr. McGee? What does it say? It says, Paul called. <laughs> <laughs> well, Creepers, didn't he say what it was about? I seem to remember he did, but it sort of slipped my mind. Giving you a message, dear, is like sending a carrier pigeon home with an anvil. Did you have a date with Paul, Alice? Well, tentatively, yes. I told Paul I'd go to the hockey game with him if I didn't go horseback riding with Goofer Harpstrite. Is Harpstrite that lieutenant commander, Alice? No, dearie. Mr. Harpstrite is a supply sergeant in the Army. No kidding. Imagine that. I was a supply sergeant in the last war. <clears throat> I was in charge of the officer's mess, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> well, if Paul calls again, will you... What are you going to do with all the tools, Mr. McGee? He's going to make like Dr. Davy and tap a tree for waffle gravy. <laughs> Stick around, Alice, and see how an expert sugar man milks a maple. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to, Pop. When are you going to do it? Right now, Alice. According to him, that tree is so bursting with maple syrup. Why, the squirrels are bearing wheat cakes this fall. Okay. <laughs> okay, scoff if you want. Be right, but by George, you'll tell all, folks. I hope I'm intruding. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Waxy. Alice, you know Waxy Wilcox, don't you? Oh, yes. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Alice. You still working at the airplane plant? Yes, I am. And you know what? No, what? Well, one of the fellows that works at the next fence to mine named Morris Mendelssohn has dedicated a song to me that he just wrote. Oh, isn't that nice. What's the name of it? Mendelssohn's Welding March. <laughs> Is it copyrighted, Alice? Well, it's righted, but I don't know if it's copy. <laughs> Look, kids, this is all very cozy, but i got to get to work. <laughs> Will you join us? Mr. Wilcox himself here is about to de-sap a maple tree. He's about to what? I'm going to tap that maple tree out in front for maple syrup, Junior. And if you have any comical remarks to make, just write them down so you can see how silly they'll look later on. <laughs> well, I don't see anything funny about it. I think it's a wonderful idea. Why, so do I. You know what a maple tree always makes me think of? Yes, we do, Mr. Wilcox. It makes you think if it was cut down and made into floors and furniture, how beautiful and smart it would look if Johnson... Oh, no, no, no. It makes me think of the National War Fund. It what? It makes me think of the National War Fund. The way it has its roots planted so firmly in good American soil. The way its hundreds of branches spread out like protecting arms. Gee, if he wasn't married, I could reach for him. <laughs> what has the National uh, uh, Mr. Wilcox, what has the National War Fund got to do with our maple tree? Well, it just reminded me of it because the National War Fund is right in your front yard, too, in a way. Giving generously to charity is as typically American as a maple tree. And this is the greatest charity of them all. In fact, it's a combination of practically all of them. It's a united appeal for 120 related war causes. One of these days, a representative will call on you folks, and uh, I hope you'll really give. Is it deductible, Junior? The reason I ask is that the government can ask such nasty questions. <laughs> I mind one year I loaned myself 45 bucks, and I charged it off as a bad debt because I knew I'd never get it back from myself. Certainly it's deductible. <laughs> Look, you actually pay only a portion of the money you give because you can charge off up to 15% of your individual income on war fund contributions. You see, it covers not only community projects, but it supports thousands of clubs for servicemen and women and merchant seamen, relief for our fighting allies, and sends aid to American prisoners of war. Look, kids, just bear this in mind when they ask you to donate. An American war prisoner has to live with the enemy. Send him some help, and you'll find it easier to live with yourself. And now, uh, what was this about maple syrup? I'm going to tap that tree out in front, Junior. Want to stick around and see how it's done? We'll need all the help we can get, Mr. Wilcox. If it doesn't start flowing, we may have to squeeze the tree. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous, Molly. Gee whiz, the minute you bore a hope... 
Alice, stop staring at Mr. Wilcox. Hmm? Oh, I, excuse me. I didn't realize I was staring. I was just thinking what a big, handsome, uh, what a beautiful, uh, I mean, those strong, sturdy limbs. And, uh, gee, I think I'll go out and look at that maple tree again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a good thing you're safely married, Mr. Wilcox. I think you've made a conquest. Not that you haven't, uh, you wouldn't have lots of competition. She's a very popular kid, isn't she? Popular? Just sit by our telephone some evening, Junior, if you want to know for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, McGee, if you're just going to stand around with that brace and bit in your hand... Oh, my gosh, I almost forgot. Come on, Junior. You're going to see as artistic a job of maple syrup production as you ever... Uh, come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Hello, Molly. Hello, Harlow. Hi, Doc. And how are you today, dreamboat? <laughs> We're all fine, strange to say, <laughs> considering the spectacular incompetence of our family physician. And if you think I mean anything personal, you're darn right. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Doctor? No, oh, thanks, Molly. I've got a maternity case waiting for me at the hospital. Mm. Serviceman's wife. Mm. Hasn't got much money, so I give her a little extra attention. Say, so what do you do, Doc? Overcharge your rich patients so you can go easy on the unlucky ones? Certainly. Robin Hood with a stethoscope. That's me. <laughs> a germicidal Jesse James. <laughs> Billy the Kid with a kidney pill. <laughs> I can make one wealthy hypochondriac pay for ten cases of mumps on the other side of town. Is that ethical, Doctor? It is if you tell them what you're doing, and I do. I say, look, Mr. So-and-so, I'm going to take out your appendix, but you're going to pay through the nose. A fair charge for my services on this case would be 40 bucks, but I'm charging you 100 because I know a boy with a broken arm who can't afford to pay for his x-rays. They pay it and think I'm wonderful. And I am. <laughs> oh, you great big benevolent burglar. Hmm? <laughs> I'll bet you stash away about 40% of that dough you chisel out of the upper crust. If I thought you really thought that, you minor accumulation of fatty tissue, I'd slap your lower maxillary so far down into your thorax it would take a laparotomy to extract your incisors. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a fatty tissue? <laughs> you big oxygen tent. You couldn't slap your way out of a wet newspaper. Oh, yeah? You got about a... Well, hey, 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 wait a minute, pal. <laughs> Say, Doc... Do you want to watch an interesting operation? Well, I'd love to, my boy. Who's operating on whom for what? Fibber's going to perform a saparotomy on that tree out in front. <laughs> He's going to tap it for maple syrup, Doctor. Isn't that clever of him? This brace and bit is for the incision, Doc. Uh -huh. Keep an eye on me and you'll see a technique you couldn't have learned in that cow town college, college you bluffed your way through. <laughs> ah, this I shall have to see. Maybe he'll give you a few pounds of maple sugar, Doc. <laughs> I'm sure he will, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> Wonderful. To think that I should see the day when I'd act as consultant to an amateur tree surgeon. <laughs> well, the doctor seems amused. Yeah, he's just feeling superior on account of this brace and bit. Superior about what? Because I'm about to bore my first patient, and you've bored thousands of them. What? Come on, let's go. Well, say, I hope he doesn't damage this tree. After the years I've spent telling people how to preserve and protect things made of wood. Oh, creepers, I hope he doesn't hurt it either. He seems to be awfully confident. It's a beautiful shade tree, Molly. It'd be a shame to hurt okay, it. Okay, everybody, about ready to start. What was you saying, Doc? I was saying it would be a shame to damage this beautiful shade tree, McGee. If I lived here, I'd be sitting under it all day. Ah, uh, you'd never take the time, Doc. <laughs> You're always in such a big bustle, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> hey, look, get going, will you, pal? I've still got a lot of Johnson's Wax to sell today. From today on, Junior, you can give maple sugar for premiums. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny about that? Oh, come on, McGee, let's have some action here. Okay, now look, everybody. You, Alice, and Doc, and Harlow, and Molly, and me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may be watching the birth of a new industry in Wistful Vista. I may be laying the cornerstone of a great fortune here. My corner of the maple sugar market in the whole state. Therefore, it behooves... Can't you poke a hole in a tree without making a speech? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm afraid you don't appreciate the importance of this occasion, Doctor. After all, the world owes all its progress to the ingenuity of individuals, original thinkers like me. Oh, thank you, Alice. <clears throat> I'm glad there's one person who realizes the significance of this occasion. Oh, I was just slapping at a mosquito, Mr. McGee. <laughs> <laughs> to conclude my remarks, folks, I want you all to keep this occasion strictly confidential. I don't want anybody else in town to know I'm tapping this tree for maple syrup. Well, I don't think it'll leak out, pal. <laughs> you don't think what will leak out? The information. Huh? Oh, uh, I, I thought you meant that... <laughs> Well, hand me the brace and bit, Molly. Here you are, sir. Do you give the tree an anesthetic? He just gave it a lot of gas and that's feet. Creepers, <laughs> Mr. McGee, I wish you'd get started. I'm all excited. Okay. Here she goes. <clears throat> Must be a dull bit. You ought to know. Been doing dull bits for ten years. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't seem so dull, McGee, if you were turning it to the right instead of the left. Huh? Oh, yes. Well, here we go again. Better stand back, everybody. Might come gushing out and get you all over syrup. After all, we don't... Oh, wait a minute, Mr. McGee. Wait a minute. Yeah, that wasp tub you wanted cast the syrup in. Oh. <laughs> Gee, much obliged, Beulah. I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> My gosh, we might have had the front yard hip deep in maple syrup. <laughs> Yes, sir. You, you sure look professional with that old brace and bit, Mr. McGee. <laughs> a logger whip of auger. Oh. <laughs> okay, now, everybody, out of the way. Stand back. I'm just about to hit the sack. Ah, there she blows. Look at it, spurt out. of Niagara Falls is so different. <laughs> Gushes out like a banker's tears. <laughs> Good thing you like wheat cakes, McGee. By the time you get enough syrup for them, you'll be too old to eat a steak. <laughs> well, maybe it just doesn't want to come out while we're watching it. Being bashful is one thing that makes a sap a sap. I always see you. Doggone it now. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. There. <laughs> well, that's four drops in five minutes. We ought to have a small pitcher full by August of 1947. How does it taste, McGee? Yeah, try it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wise guys, I will. Hmm. Hmm, it's not bad. All it needs is a little sugar. <laughs> behind my back all afternoon. You think you could do better? Not with that maple tree, pal. And what's the matter with this maple tree? Just one little thing, bright eyes. And what's that, doctor? It isn't a maple tree. It's an elm. An elm? An elm? An elm? <laughs> uh, elm. <laughs> Making like a tree sturgeon when he don't even know the difference. Beulah? <laughs> ma'am. Beulah, what on earth are you mumbling about? Oh, just think, ma'am. Imagine getting maple syrup out of old Elm. <laughs> Mr. McGee, what are you going to think of next? Well, who cares? I got a week to do it in. 